Well, I've had the solar and the power wall for a year now, so in this video, I'm gonna have a look at how it's performed over that year. Well, it's been a year now since I had the solar and the power wall installed. So it's a good time to have a look at how much energy I got from the sun over that year and also how much I've used in the house. Now, given that it's a year, obviously that covers all the seasons. So it's a good time to do that. And this is what I'm gonna look at first. If we go to the, uh, the power wall, you get this aggregates page, which shows all the meters and it also, not just the power meter, but the energy meter, which just increments like a normal power meter does on your, on your house. So if I have a look here, I'll go, I'll go first to solar. You can see this value here, solar energy exported. Now that's the, the meter of obviously what the solar is producing. Now that's in watt hours, not kilowatt hours, but that's all right, we just divide it by a thousand. Uh, energy imported to the solar obviously is negligible because it doesn't really take energy in, it just gives it out. And if we go to the load, that's the house, similar but opposite to the solar, it doesn't export anything. My house isn't producing power, it's consuming. So it's imported that we're looking at. So the big two are the solar exported and the load imported. But we'll have a look at the grid and the battery as well, just for, for other reasons. But these are the prim primary two that we're gonna look at. Okay, so what I've got here are the meters for this year from the, the 1st of April, 2019. So I'm just looking at solar now and I'll grab the value for the energy exported. Now remember that's in watt hours, not kilowatt hours. And I'll just put that in a spreadsheet here for this year. And I'll do the same with the load. So the load imported is the house consumption. And there it is. So that's for, for this year. Now on the 1st of April last year, 2018, I noted the values down and the solar exported. I mean, this is when it was first put in, so it's very low. And the load imported was 97958. Okay, so they've gone up by a fair amount. So for the yearly total for uh, solar, that would just be the subtraction of them. So equals E5 minus A5. Okay, now again, that's in watt hours. Uh, and I'll just do the load as well while we're here. So that equals F5 minus B5. And straight away, you can see though that the load is less than the solar. So ultimately I've produced enough solar to cover my consumption for the year, which includes a car as well, by the way, but we'll get to that. So I'll just make this a bit more readable. So that is in watt hours. So for kilowatt hours, I'll just divide them by a thousand. So I5 minus, uh, sorry, divided by a thousand. There's your kilowatt hours equals J5 divided by a thousand. There's your kilowatt hours. Okay, so there's my yearly total. So you can see straight away, quite clearly, I've produced enough solar to cover my needs for the year. I'll just do a couple more things here to show the difference. So if you wanna work out the uh, daily kilowatt hours, the average, of course, I'll just do I6 divided by 365. And for my consumption equals J6 divided by 365. Okay, so that's the amount average daily that I'm, I'm getting from the sun and I'm using. Again, obviously it's yearly average, so um, you know, I've got the seasons to take into account, but overall, there are the values. Now, if I wanna look at that as a percentage of, uh, percentage of the needs, well, let's see, it just goes the uh, total here. I'll, I'll use the initial values here. So I5 divided by obviously the load here, J5. That would be my yearly. Now I'll just make that percentage so it's pretty. There you go. So I have produced basically 115% of my requirements from solar here in the house. Now that's good and well, but it doesn't mean I didn't use any from the grid or feed any to the grid. And I'll have a look at that now. Okay, so I've just put the values in on this row here for what the grid in was and out a year ago and what it currently is now. So obviously it's increased. And that's in watt hours. And again, I've just converted it to kilowatt hours down the bottom here to make it uh, simple. So I'll just work in kilowatt hours and see what the yearly is. So if I go for the, the imported, the grid in, that would be equals E17 minus A17. So there you go, 352 kilowatt hours. 
and out to the grid is uh, F17 minus B17. And I've produced 1223 kilowatt hours. Now that's feed in to the grid. So obviously you can see there I've fed about four times as much to the grid as I have from the grid. Now this in from the grid, it trickles in every now and again anyway, like you get about a quarter of a kilowatt daily anyway, just because of fluctuations in voltages, of course, causes current to flow in and out, but it's negligible, but they're the main values. So you can see, as I said, I've, I've put four times as much out to the grid as I've used. Now, the reason I would have used some from the grid would obviously be for when there's been like a week's worth of rainy days or cloudy days, okay? When I'm not producing that much solar, I'll use some from the grid, okay? Or if I didn't charge the power wall up fully, um, it might have run out during the night. But there's not many days, there's really not many days when that's happened over the year. Okay, but it does happen. Now, a way around that would be if I had a bit more solar, uh, maybe an extra power wall to match it as well, I, I would be done. I wouldn't need the grid at all. And that's really what I'm aiming for here. Like, a lot of people talk about, in the media, they're really talking about uh, the countrywide uh, scale of what we're going to do with electricity. Is it going to be coal? Is it going to be solar? Is it going to be this, that, the other? That's fine, I suppose. But what I really want to do is just be off the grid altogether because I don't want to be subservient to the power companies at all, okay? The thing about solar is it's the only energy source that I can create here at home. I can't run up a, a coal or gas power plant here, right? If you had a lot of land, you might run a wind turbine, but, but really solar is something everyone can do. So that's what I like. If you have solar, you really need a battery as well for the nighttime, obviously. Like it's nighttime now, I'm running off the battery, just like I do every night. And uh, it is quite doable. Now, most people don't have an electric car, so this would be even easier for, for people without an electric car. Because don't forget, I've got a, a Tesla out there as well, and that chews by far the greatest amount of electricity. If I didn't have that and just had a petrol car, pff, this, this would just be easy. It'd be really easy, okay? So uh, that's really what I'm aiming for for myself anyway, is to just turn the grid off. And if I make excess power, well, so be it. I don't necessarily rely on being able to export it to the grid to try and make some money, because really, you're not going to make money. Okay, what I've got here is a graph of the uh, battery charge in the power wall. This is over the last week, so you can see, obviously it goes down during the night, and then when the sun comes up, it goes back up. Uh, hopefully it charges right up, sometimes it doesn't, depending on what I'm doing. But um, you get the idea, there's the charge over a week, and we're currently here, it's night time now, and you're just running off battery and it's discharging. And if I expand that out to a year, I, I don't have a full year's data on this because I didn't have this up and running the moment the power wall was installed, but you get the idea. Now you can see over the year, it won't show 100% simply because it's averaged out to show on this graph, okay, it's wedging a year's worth of data in there, but the values down the bottom are right, obviously it's maximum it's been to is 100, which it often gets to. But this one here, the average charge of the battery over the year so far is 63%, which I think is a good average to have rather than being full for a year or empty for the year. So I think that's okay. And you can see if I go back in a month's worth, we had some miserable days and you can see that uh, it ran out there. But that's over a month. So if I go over two months, you can see generally it's pretty good. I mean, there's only a few days in the year that I, that I have to use power from the grid. So that could be avoided too, as I said, if I had a bit more solar and had more battery capacity. But it's a good start. Another thing I can look at here is the energy in and out of the battery itself. Now theoretically what goes in comes out, okay, but there's going to be losses um, both during efficiency of charging and discharging and also just degradation of the battery. So I'll have a look how that went over the year. So the battery in started off 44, sorry, 41 kilowatt hours when I got it and it's currently up to 3,474. So for the year, we're looking at uh, F equals F5 minus A5. Okay, that's how many kilowatt hours it's had in over the year. And the output is uh, what G5 minus B5. Now, they don't match. Okay, so there's an extra 400 kilowatt hours that went in that didn't come out over the year. So if I work that out, I'll just subtract that to see what it actually is. Uh, I5 minus uh, J5, okay, 386. So that, K5 divided by 365, one. 
So basically I'm putting an extra one kilowatt hour into the battery daily that doesn't come out. I don't know if that's normal, what's expected, but that's what it is. So I could have a look at this next year and see if it's still one or if it's creeping up, which I anticipate it will do as the battery degrades inevitably. But um, that's pretty much what that can show averaged over a year. Now I mentioned that I'm in a unique position where I don't have to drive the car to work somewhere and not charge it during the day. But for most people, having an electric car itself is unique because most people don't actually have one. So taking the car out of this equation altogether, just pretend I don't have an electric car, my power usage would go way down, okay? Because as I said, the car is by far the biggest consumer of electricity. So if you don't have an electric car and you're just running a household, if you had solar and battery, you'd do this easy. So again, my whole point is to get away from the power companies because you've got the government saying oh, it should be coal, it should be solar, it should be this, should be that. You feed in tariffs this today, tomorrow it'll be less, all of this. I'd rather just not have anything to do with them and run my own electricity. And I just wanted to point out that it's quite possible to do. It's not just a, a fantasy that's unattainable. It's, it's pretty easy, really, especially if you don't have an electric car. Now, I've just proved that I could do it over a year with an electric car. Uh, again, being at home during the day helped that. But there are other ways to do that if you just need larger battery capacity to charge your car at night if you come home with one. But for getting the car, you can have solar on your house, a battery to store it, and for most people, you'll be able to make it through the night. Now, even if you can't completely run off your own solar, you're still only gonna use a little bit off the grid. So you could use the grid as a backup, say, if you don't really wanna go all out and go off a grid, which is what I'm aiming for. Um, but you could just have the, the grid as a backup, okay? And I think it really makes sense. If I wouldn't have solar without a battery, put it that way. Because if you've got solar without a battery, you're probably just relying on some money from feed-in credits, but you're not, it's not that good, okay? It's better to be self-sufficient and then you, know, you own your electricity. That's the way I see it. If you're using the grid, it's like you're renting your electricity and you're up for whatever the landlord decides to do. But if you get your own solar and battery, it's like, well, I've bought my electricity now. Yeah, it costs more, but I own it. So it doesn't matter what they do out there. That's the way, that's where I wanna be. So it's got nothing to do with this. I know people say, you know, we wanna be green and renewable energy and that. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. I don't really care about that. I just wanna be self-sufficient so I don't have to deal with companies. And it's quite possible and it's only gonna get easier. And as battery prices come down, which they inevitably will, you know that, it's gonna be easier and easier. So when you're talking a few, a few grand in the scheme of the price of a house, it's, it's really a small percentage of it to, to buy your electricity. So that's, that's what I'm aiming for with a little bit more capacity uh, to cover my usage here. But for most people, you should, I think you should really look into batteries if you have solar. So you're using your own solar power that you make during the day at night when you want to use it. So that's my take on it. That's the results in the real world of running an electric car and a house of solar and battery for the most part over a year.